Welcome to the Studio Archive Podcast, Episode 1. My name is Ryan Armstrong. Thanks so much for joining me here today, whether you're watching on YouTube or Spotify or Apple Music. Um, I appreciate you for checking this out. Uh, it's brand new. Obviously, it's the first episode, so I'm still trying to figure things out here. So if things get a little bit weird and wonky, um, just bear with me. Uh, this is a podcast for producers, composers, um, songwriters, anyone uh, creating music and looking to get better at their craft. Uh, I started this podcast because I, I'm a mix engineer and have somewhat re recently um, been really into producing instrumental music. And so I wanted to learn from the composers and the producers that I look up to. And I thought this would be a great way to do that and also be able to share it with others. So hopefully this is a helpful resource for you where you can get some inspiration and learn some things along the way. So I'm hoping that this can be a community uh, where we can help each other out and learn from each other. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. So if you're into that, then stick around. Um, before we get into the interview, um, there is a free uh, resource I'm going to make available for, for those of you just getting started in music production. Um, basically covers um, my recommendations for uh, some of the first plugins that you should get for uh, just for audio plugins, um, virtual instruments, and some gear recommendations. That's the thing I usually get asked the most. Um, I know there's a ton of stuff out there, and so people usually ask me like, "What what do I get started with? What kind of what's the first plugin I should buy, or first few to get started?" So that guide will answer some questions uh, that cheat sheet rather, and it's free. You can download it at thestudioarchive.co slash cheat sheet. Thestudioarchive.co slash cheat sheet. Man, it's kind of hard to say. Might have to come up with a different domain URL for that. Um, but anyways, there you go. It's for free. So if you're just getting started, make sure to grab that. Um, today's interview is with Brad Hill. And I'm super appreciative of him uh, being on the show, being episode number one. Um, Brad is a fil film composer from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, credits include CBS, Fox, Discovery, and some others. So he's definitely got some experience um, in what he does and some experience in the sync licensing world. So we're going to get into that and his involvement with Soundstripe and um, his involvement with um, working with an agency and... Yeah, I think it's going to be, it was a great interview. It was helpful for me. Hopefully you'll uh, learn some things and be inspired. So um, yeah, I think that's everything. Let's get into the interview with Brad Hill. Sweet. Well, Brad, thanks so much for, for doing this. Um, uh, I've been following you on Instagram for quite a while. Um, I don't know how I had originally discovered you, honestly. I think it was probably on Soundstripe. Um, oh, sure. I'm not really a video guy, but um, I work with other video guys. And so sometimes yeah. I help out in searching for music beds and stuff. And I think I came across you there okay. originally. So um, yeah, I appreciate you coming on. Um, really love the different types of music that you that you do under the different names um, or monikers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just go ahead and explain um, how you got into music, kind of your story, you know, a little bit yeah. about yourself, just a little background. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I came to music, um, pro you know, probably a little bit later in life. I was a big sports guy, a uh, sports kid growing up, and it was my senior year in high school. So 1995, that Christmas, I got an acoustic guitar. I had talked about maybe learning a guitar for a while, and so I got one for Christmas. And again, that was my senior year. So I graduated the summer of 96 and I immediately fell in love with learning to play. I think I got a book, um, one of the Mel Bay, Mel Bay chord, oh, yeah. you know, chord books. So, you yeah. know, I was learning, I was learning, um, a lot of the open chords and, um, that summer I actually got into private lessons and just absolutely fell in love with learning about music. And, um, up until that point, I'd always loved listening to music. Right. So I loved, you know, so um, music had always been a part of my life up to that point, but it was really much just, you know, I was focused on sports and um, so, but it was that kind of Christmas of 95 is when I really 
fell in love with music. And it was shortly after that when I was taking private lessons that summer. So I graduated, was looking about going to college and I'm like, I wonder if I, I should be doing music for, you know, that's what I should go to school. And my parents, um, you know, being, being as parents do because I was brand new to, you know, playing, playing music, playing guitar, still learning. They were like, you know, you just got your guitar a few months ago. Should probably just go for something else and maybe do music on the side. And so I went to college for two years and, and really just didn't enjoy it. I took a year off and was able to work full time, but then was able to actually, you know, still take private lessons. And then um, at the time I was in a, um, I was attending a church and I was playing in the college worship band there. And that's where I learned a lot about playing live, playing with others, um, knowing when to play, when not to play. Um, (laughs) But then we actually got to record um, uh, a CD. And that was my first experience ever in a, in a pretty decent, um, you know, environment. Like, you know, we went to a studio, we had to pay studio time. And so that was just really formative for me. um, Not only just um, growing and understanding how to play on the guitar, but playing with others, as I said. And then Mm, after that year, I actually went back for music and recording. I actually, uh, you know, said that's, this is something that, that I want to do. And so I graduated with um, a degree in recording with an emphasis, no, I'm sorry, in music with an emphasis in recording. And um, I didn't necessarily know what I was going to do with that. Um, (laughs) And uh, I actually uh, got in an internship at a studio in – at the time I was living in – I was born and, born and raised in West Michigan, um, Grand Rapids um, area. And then I'm actually now just south of Nashville, Tennessee area. Um, okay. I have a full-time job. Uh, so I do um, – I work at audiobook publishing. And that's, that's the story. I was interning at my last year in college at a studio that did audiobooks not music. Um, okay. And actually for my kind of, you know, um, uh, for my career career, I'm, you know, I still work full time doing audiobook publishing. So everything I've done in music really has been on the side. So, um, I was interning at the studio. Um, I fell into audiobooks and that was a steady, you know, income for me. And I've always done music on the side. Um, you know, I played in bands in high school and college and, um, but, um, really about 2010, um, you know, uh, I hadn't been making a whole lot of music, still was playing in churches, um, I don't know, but just really missed creating music on my own. And so my wife was actually the one who pointed it out to me. She's like, you know, you just need to create just to, you know, cause it's in you and you've got to get that, yeah. that out. And so I, I, I'm not a singer, unfortunately. I can't sing well. I tried. I took voice lessons <laughs> in college, and my instructor was like, "You've got a very interesting tone." Uh, and so nice I could take, yeah, I could take yeah. the hint. I was I was yeah. sharp enough to take the hint. That, like maybe I should stick to playing the guitar. But um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, I started writing just instrumental, kind of post rock, ambient type um, type music, which is stuff that I really liked i think um i came across the album uh talk by a band from iceland called uh called the uh, called Sigaros, um that was really formative for me and they're still one of my favorite um groups um that album was just amazing there's also a group called hammock um they're mm. they're a duo which actually they're based out of the nashville area that's um another group that was pretty inspirational to me so I started writing that instrumental post rock slash ambient type music. And then I started releasing just short five song EPs. I think my first one I released in 2012 and just that process of getting um, my music out to the world, whether or not, you know, anyone else other than me was actually listening to it was just really, um, uh, really important for me. And it still is, you know, just, you know, having, you know, um, uh, uh, having the process of, you know, trying to create these songs really on my own. Um, and then, you know, having them up online to, you know, kind of whoever stumbles across them was, yeah. was, was kind of exciting for me. And it still is. Mm-hmm. So sure. through that journey, I, um, 
you know, I, I had a few friends that said, you know, your music really sounds soundtracky or like film scorey. And mm. have you ever tried to work with, you know, licensing companies or tried and, and like back in 2012, 2013, 2014, even, you know, there was only a few large places that, that did that, you know, there, there wasn't the sound stripes, you know, where it's super easy now to, you know, get, get higher quality music at, at, mm-hmm. at an affordable uh, price. So I did reach out to them, but you know, I didn't have a name. I wasn't a known quantity. Um, my music was okay. You know, it, it, it's, you know, I certainly think what I'm writing now is just, you know, sounds better um, uh, now than it did, you know, back in 2012. So I got told no a lot and, you know, I was like, well, maybe I'm just supposed to make music for myself. Right. Cause a lot of, of, of the stuff that I write from is really how I'm feeling you know, at that time I can look back on the, on the songs that I've written and it's, it's almost like a journal for me. I don't journal much at all. Like, and I probably should, but like music for me, a lot of my music is that because I can look back at songs I've made and, Oh, I know exactly what I was going through at that time, just Mm. by the sound or sounds I used in that song, if that makes sense. So it's, yeah, it's pretty therapeutic for me, but, um, so um, I was listening to a podcast actually called Ink and Echo, which isn't um, isn't a podcast anymore. Sadly, I don't know if you are familiar with a guy by the name of Andy Offling. He goes by Lowercase Noises. Yeah, totally. He, yeah. yeah, he's an ambient artist. And anyways, he was one half of that podcast, and um, okay. he did it with his. Uh, he had a writer friend. His first name was Josh, I think, or Joshua. I forget his last name, but on that they would interview artists and stuff. And the, the episode I was listening to, they, he was interviewing this new um, licensing company called Soundstripe. Um, okay. he, they were like, lic- he was interviewing their, their two co-CEOs, um, Micah Sannon and Travis Terrell. And immediately after that episode, I reached out to Soundstripe. They had just started, they were maybe in it um, a year and so I was like, you know what, I'm going to try reaching out to this company, you know, like, why not? You know, it's been a couple of years since I tried to reach out to somebody and they responded to me and really took a chance on me. And, um, yeah, that was, re- that was my first, um, time, you know, um, jumping into the licensing world and it's, I call it click, click to licensing world, right? Because now there's a lot of companies in that space where, it's a, you know, you pay um, uh, a monthly or yearly uh, fee and you can consume or download or use as much music or content within that, you know, window. Yeah. Um, for me, it really opened my eyes and it was validation for me because up until that point, I hadn't earned any type of money from, from my music, right? And like, that was okay because again, I have a full-time job I'm, I do music on the side. But it gave me my taste of like, oh, like I'm earning a little bit of money. And that grew, that, that you know, grew over time. Um, unfortunately, I'm not with Soundstripe anymore. And I can get to that in um, a little bit. But they really were good, great to me. They, um, they took a chance on me. And they really let me experiment. And that's how I was able to branch out. You know, you mentioned, you know, my, my main moniker for them um, is just my last name, Hill which I still release music under, uh, you know, um, now. And then I have um, an electronic um, moniker by, the, um, by uh, Fairlight and then um, a kind of like indie rock acoustic called um, Bright Seed. And okay. uh, so, so, so they really let me expand. So when I got signed up with them, I was more post-rock ambient, but then I got into cinematic, dark, dark cinematic stuff. Um, I got into, you know, indie rock, um, you know, post-rock, alt-rock stuff. I just really got to experiment with different styles that maybe I had either touched on earlier or had never tried, tried to work on. So I really got to hone my chops, experiment. They really let me you know, really grow as an artist. So I'm super grateful to them. Um, sadly, um, about this time last year, they had reached out to me. And um, so I was a contractor um, with them. So I was, I was 
I was writing X amount of songs for them each month. Um, okay. Yeah, so I am no longer with them anymore. Um, I don't work for them anymore, but I have a um, huge amount of respect for them. And just, you know, they really opened my eyes to this whole being active on social media as well. I'm a firm believer in, um, you know, all of these pieces. So like what was happening was um, filmmakers and content makers were downloading my music from Soundstripe and then they were using it on their, you know, anything from um, indie films to, uh, you know, churches to smaller ads, but people were finding those ads, listening to them and trying to find out what songs were used in those. And, and I found that by having all of those songs up on, you know, across my channels, like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, that it's kind of this big circle where people, you know, having as many places and as many chances for people to come across my music, uh, is, is, uh, is the best for me because I'm kind of stuck in this world of I'm a composer. I would love to be an artist. Um, and just having my music in as many different areas as possible just increases my chances of getting noticed, right? If that yeah. makes sense. Um, yeah. And so working with Soundstripe totally um, opened my eyes to that and to the power. Now, do I enjoy being active on social media? I really don't. I'm not super great <laughs> at it. Um, but I've been really trying to hit it hard for the past two years now. And I've, you know, I've grown from you know, zero followers to you know, I have a couple hundred across my platforms, which isn't huge. But, you know, from where I was, it's been great. So, and then also working with Soundstripe, you know, opened my eyes to, oh, I can work for or work alongside other, um, other places. So there are, there are a handful of other, um, other companies that, that, that I've been working with um, um, in the click to license space. Um, and, then, and then I've also worked with a couple uh, ad houses who have reached out to me because they've come across my um, my work either from Soundstripe or some other companies that I've worked with. So, um, you know, uh, uh, I have worked with them for, uh, uh, I think the, the most recent one I did was for last, last Christmas, there was an ad agency in Kentucky that reached out to me. So I did a custom spot for them, um, which was pretty exciting to do. Yeah. So, yeah. um, and then this year too, um, I'm working with two other artists. Um, one is a singer, which I'm really excited about. Um, she was in San Francisco or the, uh, not San Francisco, California, Northern California. She's recently moved back to her hometown in Ohio, but, um, we're working on kind of a darker cinematic song. So I'm doing all the production. She's going to be singing on that, which I'm excited about. I'd love to get more into that Avenue where, you know, um, you know, having, having somebody who can do vocals is, is sure. great. And then yeah. I'm working on an instrumental song with another guy here in the Nashville area that should be coming out you know, the next month or two, probably up on, um, on, on, uh, on film pack film pack is another click to license site that I've been working with. They've been really great. Um, okay. they, they also do, um, um, 4k footage and stuff like that too. So like, oh, okay. they, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's a bit of a, a ramble there, but that's at a high oh, yeah, level, kind awesome. of my journey from, uh, <clears throat> from Soundstripe to kind of where I am now. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So you, yeah, I'm curious the back in those early days of Soundstripe or, or when you decided to, to start making this music on your own, did you, um, did you ha have any kind of hesitancy to, uh, to put it out there for other people to, to see? Mm. Um, or did you even have, cause I have a problem where I, I don't really have any deadline for any of my music. I do it on the side as well. And um, no deadline means I have a ton of unfinished music on my hard drive. Mm. And so yeah. I just don't yeah. like quite get it, you know, there. So how, how did you, did you have to struggle with that at all? Did you, how did you overcome that? Yeah, that's a great question. So back in the early days, I think I, I think I did struggle a, a little bit with, is this from the, is this finished enough to, you know, have it released? Mm -hmm. um, I always knew I wanted to, you know, it just was part of the process for me is I would create, which I love, and then I need to get it out in the world, even if mm. just, you know, two people listen to it. It just was, um, you know, uh, it, uh, that was exciting for me. But so, so I did struggle with it early on, um, pre, 
pre-soundstripe days, I think. I think what wigged me out a little bit early on in in soundstripe was that they they started signing on some of these um, some of these artists who were um, you know either played in bands that I idolized in my younger days. And now I was kind of, I was for a time on the same roster as them. So like um, there's a guy by the name of Aaron Sprinkle who was in a band called Poor Old Lou. Oh, yeah. um, and he, uh, um, he got signed on as an artist and like his stuff sounds so good. And yeah, it does. when, when he got signed on and I heard that, I was just like, what am I, <laughs> like this is super weird because like I viewed what I was doing just as not not as good essentially right and so I I had a hard time with that at first just because um, you know I felt like I didn't you know I you, I shouldn't be on the same you know on the same roster as Aaron Sprinkle because his stuff is so great but you know you know um, you know I think that all artists you know at a time we'll, uh, you know, we'll struggle with stuff like that. You know, it, it, it's, uh, yeah. you know, it's, 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 a uh, it's a bit of, uh, of the struggle is, is this good enough or, um, is this meaningful? Um, but, um, you know, lately for me, um, I've gotten into a habit of just trying to sit down and write something every night. And part of that has come from, my work at sound soundstripe. So, um, you know, again, I'm no longer working with them, but my experience with them was fantastic and great. And they were super kind to me. Um, one of the things that was great is I owed them, um, a number of songs every month. So it got me in the habit of having to write under a, not a super tight deadline, but under a, you know, like I owe them, um, yeah. X amount of songs each month. I've got to get those churned out. And because I'm working full time, because I have a family, I have three girls um, who are super active. And so I've got to, you know, if I still want to be, you know, a dad and a husband to them and then still have a full time job, but then work, you know, um, then at night, you know, one hour, two hours a night, late at night, um, I've got to sit down and try to bang stuff out. And that got me in the habit of churning out things consistently. So I'm, I'm like you, I have a ton of, you know, unfinished projects that have a, you know, a, a four bar or an eight bar idea. But I tend to know too, like, because I've been doing it a while now that if I sit down and I spend 15 minutes and just stuff isn't coming, I, I actually stop and I do something else because mm. I know that it's probably nothing going to, you know, like, I, you know, I can't push it, you know, and my time would be better spent reading a book or doing something yeah. else. Um, yeah, sure. But I do almost every night sit down and try to write something, whether or not that happens or not. Um, and it's still pretty exciting for me to, to you know. Um, so, for instance, I've got I've got two albums set to release already, so they're already up. Um, I've got a dark darker album releasing uh next week friday actually so oh cool um um it's uh i think it's 10 songs 11 songs you know just really or you know kind of hybrid orchestral big drums big 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 strings and then um i've got it an, an album in september releasing it's a concept album so i did a concept album last year an ep um based off of blade runner um, um, and oh, the yeah. movies. Yeah. Uh, so those soundtracks are great. I love them. And so I did a five song EP just based on, on that. Right. So, um, yeah, that's and, cool. and, and, and I found that that was received pretty well. Um, and so this album that's releasing in September is, um, a concept album based on a Ray Bradbury novel, um, and so, you know, he, he writes kind of darker sci-fi stuff. So it's right before Halloween. Um, and so, uh, that's coming out and then I've got, um, and then I think I'm going to move away from the darker, darker cinematic stuff. I've been really getting back into ambient meditative, um, type music. And I think that's really kind of my first love cause that's where I kind of started. And so I think next year is, um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to be focused on, on more of 
of that slow, contemplative, reflective, sad, somber type music. And, you know, it's hard for me because I'm, you know, you hear as if you're trying to be an artist, the, the thing that, that I struggle a lot with is, do I want to do kind of film scorey, bombastic, cinematic stuff? Or do I want to do ambient, reflective? Can can those two live side by side? Should I create another month? Like, you know, I think about that stuff yeah. all the time and what's best because I hear it on both sides. Like, Hey, you should, you should try to separate those, but then it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to have another name to try to come up with. And then how do you market, you know, right. like yeah. playing that type of game. So that's the struggle that, that I go along with. I don't, I don't necessarily struggle with um, when to release a song or if it's good enough. I am at, at a place, I think, where most of the songs, like when I'm creating something, I know relatively quickly, like, okay, this is going to be a single or this is going to be a part of an album. Um, mm. And, but I, you know, again, I'm like you, I have a, hundreds of unfinished stuff. <laughs> and I find that, I find that if I sit down and I have a block, right? Or like I will actually, one of my practices is I'm going to open up you know, older project folders and okay, what was I thinking, you know, about a year ago and I'll open something up. And a lot of times it's like, Oh, I remember that. Oh, that's great. That, that's actually good. And now I can add to, you know, um, I can add on to that. So, right on. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Well, first of all, I got I have three girls as well, so we've got that in common. Oh, nice. So I get that like balance of job, family, and somehow trying to fit music in all of this. It's hard. Um, yeah, it is. Um, yeah. But no, that's, that's actually one, one of the things I was hoping to ask you about, which you totally answered, is I feel like you're just like a, a machine releasing music. Like I, I just feel like I'm always seeing you posting like, <laughs> that you're working on something or there's a new one coming out. I was like, man, how is this guy like doing this? It's, somehow yeah. he's just cranking these. Yeah. And so it's so, – But, yeah, I mean, you, guess you have this like daily habit of sitting down and – and working things out, which is awesome. It is. Yeah. And you know, I, I also have a deep, uh, backlist of, you know, songs that, that, that are out in the world. But so, you know, um, if I don't feel like posting something or if I don't have any new content to post, I'll actually look back in my backlist, you know, and be like, Oh, this song released two or three years ago. Most people don't remember it. I'm just going to post about it. Right. So at least I'm staying in front of, uh, you know, of the eyes and ears, I guess, so to speak. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do have a good habit and, um, you, you know, most, you know, as I said, most nights around nine o'clock, nine to 10 or nine to 11, you know, every night, um, you know, I'm trying to do something with music. And then on the weekends, my family is usually pretty gracious, with me that I can hit it hard. So I'm usually, especially on the weekends, the first one up, I can't sleep. The older I get, the more I can't sleep in. So I'm usually up between six 30 and seven in the morning, which is usually an, you know, at least an hour before anybody else is up. So, yeah. you know, I am able to hit, hit it hard in the morning. And then, um, and then in the afternoons, you know, I try to hit, you know, two, three hours, maybe two. Um, and so, yeah, it's just really trying to maximize, the small amount of time that I have. Um, and, sure. you know, again, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've gotten into uh, a decent habit of, you know, trying to change something out and it comes and goes in waves. Right. So, um, you know, there'll be a month where I'm kind of in a, you know, kind of this reflective somber mood and I'm coming up with idea after idea. And it's usually five, six, seven songs will come out or ideas for songs within, you know, a week or two. And then, you know, just a couple, you know, like this past month, I've been feeling like I really haven't had a lot of ideas, right? And so it, <laughs> it's just, you know, these peaks and valleys and, sure. you know, recognizing that that's kind of how I work and not being scared about it. I think maybe that's one thing that I've learned um, mm. over the years is, you know, uh, back when I was working with Soundstrip, I always had this kind of fear of like, okay, I'm, I'm on the hook every month I have to do. I have to send them these songs and what if I don't have enough ideas to right? And so I always actually worked ahead. So if I was having a month where, okay, I sent them their songs, but I've got three more ideas. Okay. I'm going to fully produce those ideas and I'm going to hold on to them for next month or for okay. a month where maybe I don't have, 
um, you know, as many ideas so that I'm still covered and I still work that way, I think. So I'm sitting on, I don't know, a dozen or two dozen songs that are almost, almost done or are done. And I'm just waiting for the right time. Like, okay, is this an album or, you know, um, should these songs go to this, you know, this company, you know? So, um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, let's say you do sit down one of these evenings to, to write something, cause it's just kind of like your routine and you don't necessarily, you know, know what you're going with yet. Not, not necessarily an idea or an inspiration. Do you have some kind of like writing process that kind of gets things going? Um, is there, a, I guess, kind of a typical, um, the way that you think about starting something off or is it completely different every time? Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the high level answer is it, it can be different. Um, I think a few years ago, because I learned to play music on a guitar and that's my first instrument. Um, it used to be really, you know, you know, it would start out there, you know, I would have either a chord idea or, you know, three or four notes that I was kind of noodling on and it would start there. But the past year, really, um, I haven't played a whole lot of guitar, which is super sad because one, I love guitar and I have (laughs) a decent number of them, but, but like I haven't plugged into an amp in, I can't remember the last time is when I turned on an amp because I'm kind of in the box right now. (laughs) So in the box, meaning, you know, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of samples and sound libraries that, that, I use. And sure. part of that's just because it's easy to do. I fire up my computer and within a minute, you know, I, you know, I can start writing, right. Something. So, you know, the past year it's really looks like me coming in and, you know, um, I have a keyboard here and lately it's been writing from either the piano or strings or, you know, like a pad and just, you know, going through sounds to see what's interesting. Um, I really love, you know, um, as I said, I've been really getting back into like kind of ambient and almost lo-fi stuff. There's a plugin that I've been really using a lot called Wires by a company um, called Audio Thing. Okay, I'm not and it was and it was done in um, coordination with a guy named uh, Heinbach, who's I think a German composer, and Anyways, it just is a great plugin. It's not super expensive. I think it's like 50 bucks. And um, hmm. it just, you slap that on anything and it just immediately makes it sound super gritty, lo-fi. Um, and it's just really inspiring because, you know, a normal synth sound, which is kind of just, okay, this is nice, but, you know, you know, it's, it's just a synth or, you know, a pad. Slapping yeah. this on there and tweaking that just makes it, um, exciting. So I'm really mm. lately like l- listening for a sound or sounds that okay. are inspiring. And then that takes me on, um, on a journey or like, Oh, that sound makes me think of, of this. And, you know, then I've got, Oh, I've got an idea for a melody. So let me try that out. Um, so, it's, so it's really sounds, sounds are expire, uh, inspiring me lately. Um, you know, like, like, um, loops so like you know um i can play something and then i'll actually like i wonder how that sounds backwards with you know lots of reverb on it so really Mm. just you know um re experimenting experimenting, yeah so like i i will create a two bar loop four bar loop with you know it could be piano it could be drums and just you know yeah mess with it and then and then use that as a uh as a building block okay yeah, right on. Do you have um, one, one of the problems that I have is um, maybe I just completely am thinking about it wrong, but how do you name these songs when you're done? <laughs> or do you name them ahead of time? That's great. So when I open up, so I'm, I'm mainly in Pro Tools. Um, I do use Reason some, um, but Reason now has, um, has a plugin where, you know, I'm actually able to open Reason within Pro Tools. Um, right. Super yeah, easy which is to so use. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so I'm in pro tools and the first thing I do is I just name the session with the date. Um, because I never know at that point yet, like, is this going to turn it into something or is this not? And so yeah. I have hundreds of folders with just dates on them where I know, okay, that, that hasn't 
turned into something yet, but then I can go back to it. You know, as I was saying earlier, you know, I can go back to three, four, you know, five, six years ago and be like, what was I thinking then? At least there's a date on it for me. So I can kind of, what was happening back then? But then at some point when, you know, I'm building out a song and I know this is going to be something, then I will try to come up with a name for it. So I still leave the date on, but then I just name it. If I don't quite have a name for it yet, then I'll try to add just like, like, like a key phrase, like, um, you know, ambient song with strings or so that it lets me, as I'm scrolling through things like, okay, yeah, that's right. That's the ambient song that I, you know, I was working on, but I do try to name it early on because then that, that, that is helpful for me too, just to keep track of, 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 you know, song, song titles. And if it's a single or if it's going to go on an album or, you know, where, where that song is going to go. Okay. Yeah. And I also, I'm also, um, trying to get better at, uh, so, so in pro tools, obviously, you know, I always, always want to know, you know, so I change the key right at the front, like, okay, what key am I writing in? Or if there's key changes, I always highlight that. But then if there's, you know, if it's more than four chords in the song, I always have to leave myself notes on those chords just because uh, yeah, yeah. I get so many songs and like, you know, uh, I'm like, Oh, what uh, key yeah, was I in smart. here? And then like, you know, yeah. I spend maybe two or three minutes and then it's like, okay, that's what I was doing. But whereas I was like, okay, if I spend five seconds, just, you know, uh, it's yeah. just easier that's to draw. Smart. I've totally had that problem going yeah. back several months and you're like, I got to like relearn what I was doing here. Cause I have no idea at this point. <laughs> exactly. And, and like that just help, helps me. Right. Because I don't, you know, I don't have perfect pitch. Um, sadly I don't, but then yeah. it just <laughs> helps me quickly. Okay. That's what I was doing. Perfect. Now yeah. I know what I was doing. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah. I love it. So you're in pro tools. Um, yep. I've seen you use, I'm just curious. So like some of your go-to like virtual instruments, I've seen you use, um, Spitfire libraries for strings. Yeah. Um, do you have multiples of their, of their libraries? Or <laughs> yeah. Have- yeah. I'm trying to, mm-hmm. so probably my favorite is the, um, I think it's called the chamber evolutions by, um, Olafur Arnold's. Okay. Um, and it's this string. So it's, chamber springs. So it's a smaller, um, I don't know if it's four or six pieces. Um, but it's, um, it's just beautiful. So like, I already love his, love his music. Right. And so I don't know how much you know about him, but again, he's, um, uh, he's, uh, he's from Iceland actually as well. Just beautiful arrangements, composer. Um, I know he's written for films, But just the sound of that library is inspiring. Like I can literally press and hold a single like note, a G note, and it immediately just, you know, I, I feel something. So Mm. that, that library is by far, um, uh, uh, probably one of the most inspiring, just sounding and it sounds really good. Um, so I use that quite a bit. I recently got his composer toolkit through spitfire as well they um they're they're more of an expensive library but they do do decent sales throughout the year and that's typically when uh, if i'm going to try to get a spitfire library i definitely try to wait until um until these sales they do do these, these these lower cost you know of course they do the labs which i don't know if the free uh, ones the free ones which are which are really great. And then they've been doing this, this line of originals, Mm -hmm. which are like 49 or $29, which um, they've got a cinematic piano, which I got and And that's, that's, that's great. And it's really, really affordable. So I love what they're doing. So um, I have um, Albion one, I think by them and Albion, I think it's Albion three. Cause I think they discontinued Albion too. So those are their okay. cinematic kind of all in one. So it has, you know, yeah. a, you know, a big screen section, horn section, brass, um, uh, woodwinds, um, percussion, that type of stuff. So I got those a couple of years ago when I was really getting into like the film scoring and, um, yeah. really enjoying that. Um, those are really good, um, and then I just got some, uh, I'm trying to think of strings. What other strings? I know I have more. Um, 
there's a Spitfire um, Aperture Strings by Spitfire, which they don't sell. It was a Black Friday like add-on. They did something where if you spent X of money, you got this Aperture Strings. Oh, okay. Um, which actually is really cool. It's a smaller um, string ensemble. It goes from, I think, two players up to like six or eight, um, which is great. So like um, I've, I've used that a bit on some quieter stuff. So, you know, I am able to control it being really, really quiet. And then I can slowly ramp that up, you know. Um, yeah. So having that flexibility of going from two players to I think six players is is pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. What about um, like what do you do for drum stuff? Like even actually, I just um, a little bit ago this morning I think um, what that new one that you posted, um, pocket full of candy. Oh yeah. Those those drums. What do you do for drums? <laughs> or what do you typically do for drums? Yeah. So that one is that's that's actually an older song. So uh, oh, really? speaking about how sometimes I pull from uh, <laughs> older songs, that was done originally for Soundstripe, but I still own all rights to that. So I actually got that back. Um, okay. And so, yeah, so that was done in 2017 or 2018, I think. I think that from the sounds of it, that's that's one of Darren King's um, packs from that sound. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so Did that sound is- program that out? I can't remember. I think there's a, so I think there's a couple things going on in there. I think I think I used a loop at some point in that song, but then I added okay. on top of that as well, right? Because there's a lot okay. of breaks in there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then actually, um, some of the guitar work. I'm trying to think. I may have used a sample pack um, from Sample Fuzz, who uh, from uh, Roy Mitchell. Cardenas, um, who was also in Mute Math. So Darren was in Mute Math. Roy was in Mute Math. Roy actually has his own sample company too called Sample Fuzz Audio. Definitely should check okay. that stuff out. Yeah, I haven't um, heard of that one. I'll have to check he's got, that. yeah, he's got great bass, great guitar, great synth samples, um, and, and great drum samples as well for um, pretty affordable prices too. So that, I'm trying to think what else is in there. I can't, I can't quite remember, but drums definitely were – um, one or two of the Darren King, because I think he's got two or three that sound sample packs. So okay. I definitely pulled most, if not all those tr- drums and loops from those packs. Okay. Yeah, for some of the cinematic stuff, um, like I said, Albion 1, Albion 3, um, Heaviosity I use quite a bit for cinematic drums. They, oh, have, yeah. okay. um, they have like a $99 maybe or $150. I forget the name, the name of it um off the top of my head but um i use that quite a bit um and then i've got um a couple libraries from adio 8 dio adio mm. some of their um they have a tom a tom library and then they have a frame drum library which i use um and of course there's i mean there's lots of other great libraries out there but those Oh, and I just got um, a library like from Keep Keep Forest. I think it's the name called Devastator. I want to say it's huh. Keep Forest. It's not Keep Forest. I think I'm um, murdering the company's name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me see if I was right. Yeah, Keep Forest. I was right. Um, it's like super cinematic, really gritty, really dark. Um, I actually just – I've got a couple songs up on Film Pack actually that use that sample pack for just really kind of heavy, heavy hits. So like think of like trailer style, okay. just in-your-face stuff. Yeah. Um, I used it, you know, again, they had a sale and I was like, oh, this would be fun. So like, that's another dangerous thing for me is that <laughs> because I'm so sound inspired lately, like I'm, I have kind of the, uh, you know, well, I, I have issues with listening to a sample. I'm like, oh man, if I had that sample pack, I could be doing so much cool stuff. Right. And, oh, yeah. um, and so I, I, I just have to be content, you know, at times I'm at a place where, do I really need more sounds? Probably yeah. not. 
unless it really is something unique and, yeah. and new because I have plenty of, you know, inspiration, you know, or at least I sure. should. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Have you taken a look at the, um, Ashlight by native instruments at all? There's that. What's that? Oh no. Ashlight. And, um, that was the new one, but as a part of like this, I didn't even know they were kind of doing it together. It was like a trio of, uh, Feralite, I feel like is one. Oh, okay. Now I can't remember, but really like cool cinematic stuff. A lot of it, I think like textural, but. Oh I'm yeah. yeah. I remember seeing something about they that. They sound pretty sweet. <clears throat> yeah. Native instrument stuff is, is great. Obviously I have contact and, you know, use, use that for the bulk of my, um, Hmm. of my instruments oh yeah this is cool and like for me too like the older i get like the simpler the interface like i love all the bells and whistles and like being able to tweak things but like i want like four knobs really and i want it to yeah. sound good out of the gate right um yeah so but yeah yeah this is great well here we go yeah this thing cool I got to get this now. Thanks. So, I know. Now you got to get That's it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And you I'm know what? If you buy you. all three, I think they make it a little bit cheaper for you. So. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Uh, I love it. Uh, man. Man, I'm curious too, like just going back a little bit, that experience with the agency. Um, oh, yeah. What was the process? with? What was that like working with them? Yeah, man. So it was really, really interesting. So they had actually – used so i did maybe two or three christmas songs for soundstripe a couple years ago when they were trying to build up their you know kind of holiday offering and they that agency ended up using one of my songs in an ad that they did for a like a car dealership and it won you know ended up winning like a couple addy awards you know Hmm. and so they had reached out to me um after that, I was like, hey, we're going to do another one next year. Do you want to just work with us? Direct? I'm like, yeah, yes, I do. It's great. So, <laughs> yeah, it was a 30, 30 second spot, maybe in a 60 second spot. So, um, yeah, I had a couple phone calls with them and just, you know, talked about, you know, kind of style of the shoot, um, you know, the content of it, and then obviously the song. Um, and the song changed over time, actually. They were super gracious. I had actually roughed out an idea on a song, and then you know I sent it to them, and then they actually had to pivot. So I had less time to actually work on the new song, but um, it actually worked out great. Um, and yeah, you know, I just had to make sure that it, that that you know I was out at you know twenty nine seconds, you know, or whatever. Um, sure. But um, I mean, it, they gave me free kind of free reign. I sent them, I think maybe three, three rough drafts over time, just like, Hey, you know, here's this. And then they would give some feedback, but they were really, uh, really easy to work with. Um, they give it was you a great like reference music or anything. Or just no, well, what they wanted. yeah. So they wanted something similar to what the, the song that they used on the previous one, but obviously okay. it was a different, a different ad, but they wanted to kind of carry the same vibe, which is okay. kind of the, kind of ethereal ambient stuff, which I feel like is right in my wheelhouse. So I, I kind of knew early on exactly what they were going for because they said, Hey, this song was great. We want something like that, but obviously, you know, you know, on, on this song. So I forget the, um, I forget which, 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 which tune it was. It was actually, it's a, it's a Christmas carol, but I forget, I forget which, which one it was now off the top of my head. But yeah, I mean, it was something, you know, just a couple pads, simple piano melody, really. And then um, some some light strings and it kind of built up to kind of the, you know, the payoff where it's this girl and her family are going to spend Christmas with their grandmother whose grandfather recently passed away. And like the big payoff was when they, op- you know, was when she opened the door and they were there with their presence and mm. it was very touching and sweet. And so kind of was a slow, slow build, but it had to build quickly to that moment and then sure. drop off. So, okay. you know, I probably used maybe only five or six instruments, but it was just, you know, trying to balance those, get the right sounds. Um, yeah. But yeah, it turned out really, really, really fun. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Did you was that with the ad agency itself, or did they, or was it the like a music house that they had? No, so they reached out to me directly. They got, okay. they found me through 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 Soundstripe, but they um, they worked with me on that directly. So I interfaced okay. with them, that's cool. which was great because then, I mean, you know, when it comes to payment, I got you know, I got to keep all the money, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, which is which is an added bonus. So yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 And like, you know, I, I own the rights to that song. So I could, I could, I could reuse it again if I wanted to, but you know, it's a 30 second spot. I probably won't need to ever use that again. Um, I could build it out longer maybe, but sure. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I just had a couple more questions before I, uh, we wrap up. Yeah. uh, Let you get back to your day. Um, so what do you do for mixing? Do you mix everything yourself? Do you send that off? For mixing and mastering, yeah, that's that's a great question. So, um, early, so yes, yeah, so the answer to that, most of it is yes. Um, prior to Soundstripe, I was mixing, um, mastering all my stuff myself, um, and then when I got in with Soundstripe, I was still doing that. And then there was a point about halfway through Soundstripe where they they actually have a team of mix engineers, and uh-huh. so um, I stopped mixing my stuff, um, you know, and y- they were handling that. And of course, my stuff was was sounding killer. And um, I actually made friends with a guy by the name of Jay Hall, who's actually lives here in the Nashville area, um, who um, who I still have mix a lot of my stuff, especially if it's going to go up on onto onto some sites, right? Because I want to make sure that it sounds really great. Um, but I also mix my own stuff now as well. Um, so it just depends. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I probably say I'm split 50, 50. Uh, so I still mix about half of what I do. The other half I send to Jay Hall. Um, who's just a wizard. Um, he, he not only mixes, he's a producer. He works with lots of artists in the area and, um, he's super great, but, um, that's awesome. Yeah. It's about 50, 50. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and then just had, I just had one more question as we wrap it up. Um, do you have any advice for any up and coming kind of, um, you know, producers and composers you're looking to do kind of what you're doing? Yeah, I would say, um, I would say, you know, try to do as much as you can. And so that is writing, writing music, right. Um, like, like try to sit down and get into the habit of just creating whether, you know, probably 80% of what I create hasn't been heard. And I don't know if it ever will, but because of <laughs> I'm in that process, you know, I think, um, I don't know if you know the band Switchfoot, but I remember John Foreman. Oh, yeah. One of reading, my favorites. Yeah. Actually, reading, I have one of their albums on my wall. <laughs> oh, to see back there, but. oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, their, their new album came out today, by the way. Um, oh, it did. That's right. Yeah, I've got to listen to it. But um, he had said that he writes a song a day. Mm. So, so, you know, every year he writes 365 songs. But at the time, I think that, you know, what, 10, 12 songs on an album. So you never get to see, but it's the practice yeah. of doing that that actually gets those 10 or 12 songs that kind of rise to the top. And, um, mm, yeah. you know, at the time I read that, it, it was like, oh, that's a good idea. But, man, that's that's a hard habit to actually get into and so again grateful grateful to soundstripe because i i feel like they really helped me get into this habit of just creating and now if i go like two days without really doing anything i am agitated i need to i just need to get something down right um whether or not it it, you know if if it goes anywhere so i would say just try to get into some type of habit where either you're carving out time at night or there's a certain time of day where you just like, I have, even if it's 30 minutes, like I'm going to sit down and try to just bang something out. And then I would also just like say yes to as many opportunities as possible, even if it's like free or unpaid. Right. Um, Mm. So there is a, um, there is a uh, astronomy um, YouTube channel that is run by a professor out of New York and I'm kind of a big space geek. Oh, I'm not a big space geek, but I just love space as a kid. I love space. Mm -hmm. And they started using some of my music that was up on Soundstripe. Well, 
they have millions of views. And so I reached out to, to this guy directly and was like, hey, look, like, I love your channel. I only understand about maybe 5% of what you talk about, but <laughs> it's really engaging. Like if I, if, if I were to send you some of my music to use, like you can use it for free. Like, you know, you know, I, you know, I just asked that you would, you know, you know, just, um, he, uh, he's able to post links back to, you know, my Spotify page and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, he does like, um, they do a, a few videos a month. And so I recognize one that, that that's a trade off for me, but um, there's a lot of ears on those videos, right? And so yeah. um, that's exposure for me, and it's a risk that I'm willing to take just because, um, you know, again, I'm in the place where I'm making music on the side right now. I have a full time job. Would I love to be earning a full time income from music? Yeah, right. Who wouldn't? Who's in you know doing music? Um, yeah. But like for me, just that exposure, like of people hearing my songs and then they make their way back to my YouTube channel or my Instagram page and then they become fans or followers, right? That just kind of helps me. It's, you know, again, to, um, yeah. you know, like all, all of that stuff is connected that my songs up on, you know, Soundstripe or Film Pack, my Instagram, it's all, you know, all these places for people that kind of experience what I do, it's all connected, Um and so I would say, yeah, just those two things. Try to create as much as you can and try to just seek out as many opportunities. And, you know, I was told no a ton of times, you know. Um, and it really wasn't until about five years ago when I kind of first got my, 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 my break, which was what, 2015, 2016? Um, you know, after having been really active for, for five years trying to pursue you know, composing work. So, and I'm still yeah. early on. I mean, I really am. I'm still, you know, I don't have a huge name, you know, like, uh, but uh, I still love it just as much, if not more, you know, like mm -hmm. I just, I just love creating. So, yeah, dude, yeah. love that. Well, man, thanks again so much for being willing to do this and taking yeah, time absolutely. out of your day to talk to me. It's been awesome. It's super helpful for me and hopefully it will help uh, many others as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's been great, right? Appreciate it. Hey, real quick, actually, before we go, what is what's the best place for people to kind of follow what you do and and uh, find your music? Yeah, that's great. So, um, uh, Hill Hill makes music is uh, where you can find me on Instagram, Facebook. I have uh, a website that I'm not super active on, but it's just hillmakesmusic.com. I think. Um, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Yeah, no, it is. It's uh, hillmakesmusic.com. Um, and then and then my Spotify account. So I have music under Hill, which in hindsight probably wasn't the best uh, name to come up with because it's just hard to if, – if you search Hill on Spotify or Apple Music, it will come up with like Faith Hill and Lauren Hill. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> you would have to type in a song title as well. So you could type in uh, Hill, um, you know uh, – Oh, I'm trying to come up with a song title here. Here we go. We'll go. So <laughs> Hill um, or an album. Hill and uh, uh, Our Last Stand, right? So it'll pop up. Um, but I have all a lot of albums up under under Hill. I, I do have some music up on Spotify. It's Fairlight. I'm actually still releasing like singles um, under Fairlight. Um, it's more kind of synth wavy retro synth like you know um 80s type music so i'm still kind of active on there because i enjoy that music bright seed my indie rock moniker from soundstripe um is up there as well but i'm not i'm not releasing stuff through there on my own i doubt i will anytime soon but that's that's up there as well um, okay cool and then of course you know I, you know i think i have um email contact or like, you know, if anyone's interested and wants to ask questions, you know, they can reach out to me on those various ways. And, and I'm usually pretty uh, happy to respond. So cool. Cool. Awesome, man. Well, thanks yeah. again. All right. Yeah. I appreciate it. This has been great. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Brad Hill. Um, I super appreciate him being on the show, being episode one. Uh, that was awesome. Hopefully you're able to learn some things and maybe get some inspiration along the way. 
Um, I think the biggest takeaway for me was just his commitment to showing up each day and making music, doing what he's passionate about. And I think that's why he's been able to get good at what he does and get the opportunities that he's had. And so I think that's something that we can all um, take and implement into um, our lifestyle and our routines. So thanks, Brad. Uh, Before we sign off for the day, make sure if you are new to all this and learning all this to grab that free cheat sheet, um, the studioarchive.co slash cheat sheet. You can grab it there for free. And yeah, I think that's it. Thanks so much. I appreciate you for listening. If you're still listening, that's awesome. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe so you're notified of the new ones. And uh, until next time, I will see you in the next episode. That was weird. All right. See you next time.